May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So there's a form of Christian prayer or meditation called Ignatian spirituality. And uh, when I was first introduced to it, the idea was that you would read one of the stories of Christ, and I was taught originally the healing stories, but uh, mysteries of Christ. And using your imagination and your learning and understanding, you would enter into that story and you would explore it from various different perspectives. The perspective of an onlooker, a disciple, the person healed, or perhaps even of Christ. I want to take that idea and use it as a springboard and we're going to wander off in a slightly different direction with these parables of Jesus. The context here, obviously, is that uh, Jesus is eating with tax collectors and sinners, and the Pharisees are getting grumpy about that. And uh, this is, if you will, the blunt weapon version of teaching. Jesus is talking very directly to them, and he says, God cares about sinners and tax collectors, so should you. Uh, we would all get that, I think. But uh, in these parables, there are a number of characters. And I want to start with the story of the sheep. And I want to pick this story up from after the shepherds got back and the sheep and it's night settled. And a couple of the old, older sheep, in my mind, they're kind of the grizzled old rams, a couple of the old ewes. They've all gathered at the pub afterwards. They've got a beer. Oh, that was stressful. Oh, I tell you what, when the shepherd left, I was worried. You know, it's his job to look after us. But I think we did okay, boys. You know, we got, we got the kids together. We packed them into the middle there. We, were, we were made sure we were on the outside. Yeah, well, I was nervous when I heard a rustling in the bushes. I'm not saying it was a wolf. I'm not saying it was a wolf or a bear lions but I was nervous oh, but we did okay we, we everybody was okay everyone was safe I think we did okay anyways that story obviously is totally fictional uh, <laughs> except for where it's not um, I'm assured that sheep will actually do that you know the older more mature ones they will go they don't gather at the pub afterwards <laughs> let's clarify that um, but, but the older ones, I'm told, they'll gather around the outside and they'll protect those who are in the inside. Those that are younger, less mature, less knowledgeable. And we need to learn from those sheep. Because sometimes it feels like, why isn't God doing something about this? Why is the shepherd not looking after these sheep? We need to learn from those sheep that sometimes it's our responsibility to do that. Sometimes it's our responsibility to look after the young ones, the ones that don't necessarily know how to do things. We have a responsibility. Now, in Jesus' day, a flock of a hundred sheep was ridiculously large. And possibly we need to hear that and think, you know what? It's just possible, possible, that God's flock is greater than just those people that gather in this church on a Sunday morning. It might even go beyond the faithful Anglican that worship in the same way we do. Possibly God's flock is so large that it extends to all of creation. And we have a responsibility to look after and care for all of creation. All those that God cares for and loves. So I want to move on to the next story. The story of the woman who's lost one of her silver coins. And Jesus doesn't give us a comparative currency moment here. But conservatively each coin is a week's wages for a labor. So this is quite a substantial amount of money that a person who is poor has managed to accumulate. And we might imagine it's her dowry, 
or perhaps something she's saving up for her own children. But it's 10 weeks wages, one of the coins has gone missing. And she likes a lamp. And I want to look at this from the lamp's perspective. And there are two approaches we could take. And some days my suspicion is we take one approach, other days we take the other. And some days we feel like we're that lamp. And a lamp's function is to shine a light. And we shine as bright as we can. And we shine and the light pierces the darkest corners and goes under there. And we're shining as bright as we possibly can. And the woman doesn't take a moment to appreciate the work we do, does she? No. What's she doing? She's fossicking over there underneath the table looking for something. And she's playing with the sacks of food as she moves them around. Looking. She never takes a moment to appreciate the work that we are doing as lamps. Alternatively, alternatively, we could look at it from a different perspective. Alternatively, we could understand that the lamp, along with the woman, have a function. And so instead of us shining and she's looking, together we're searching for something that was lost. And we're doing our part and she's doing her part. And we're a team in this effort to find that which was lost, to, to track down that coin. And when the coin is found, then we as the lamps celebrate as well. If we understand ourselves as part of God's team, then when one sinner repents, even if they don't look like you or I, even if they don't do things our way, then we are with the angels in heaven and we celebrate with them over one sinner who repents because we are part of God's team and God's mission. So we must be like those sheep with the care for the world, for all in need. And every day we must make the choice to be part of God's team, to be part of the team that searches for the lost and returns them to what they sh where they should be. And we may celebrate with the angels in heaven. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.